Hi there, guys. Just a quick note on the front of this one. Um, I misspeak here. Uh, I mean to say that we've done 2i and then we're now doing 2j and 2k in this video. Okay, that's me done. Okay, hi there, guys. Uh, well, we're about to do after 1i, we're about to do 1j, and I'm going to fit into this video 1k as well. So 1j is about piecewise functions. Um, piecewise functions are again one of those things which you might be trying to or having to create when you're doing your coursework. Often you're dealing with graphs with your coursework and often there'll be many different parts to those graphs and so you'll use one of these piecewise functions. So piecewise functions are basically saying, okay, well, the function could either be this in this domain or this in a separate part of the domain of the function. So there could be different functions Bring, bring, being brought together um, uh, to, to make the one function. Okay, so that's piecewise functions. And in 2K, they talk about defining different types of functions. So one-to-one -one functions, many-to-one functions, and onto functions, which is something which doesn't get discussed a lot. I think it was not in the old course, but it is in this one. Um, okay, so, right, just to begin then, Let's just take this. Let's just have a look at the notation which they're using here as well. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit, a bit about the mass notation in some of the definitions later on. But in particular, at the moment, what I wanted to look at was here's a function and here's another function which go together to make this function here. So this is a piecewise function. Um, and of course, you could have more than two things you can have one two three functions or you could have many functions all with conditions for domain of x and you can see at the front they're saying f of x is equal to this thing and in fact they've defined it to be this that's kind of unusual to get that in the middle we normally just go straight from this to this okay but actually what i wanted to look at here let's just take all of this away what i wanted to look at is this notation and this and this, which kind of looks difficult. And I think it turned up in the first chapter as well, but um, I don't think I discussed it. Um, it. It's basically a different way of writing down this no, this um, domain here. So instead of writing, you know, x belongs to our real numbers and x is greater than or equal to zero, what we can say instead is this. We can say, well, we're looking at the numbers starting at zero, and going all the way up to infinity. And even though that's a concept um, and not a number, it's just saying we can go up as high as we possibly uh, want to. Okay, we can go up as high as we want to. Now, when we have an inside, sort of a closed bracket this way round, that's saying that the zero is allowed. If I put the bracket this way around, it would denote the fact that we would not be including zero in this category. Now here you can see that we are allowing zero, so we're going to put the bracket this way round, so a closed off bracket, so the right way round. <clears throat> and because infinity is not actually a number and we can keep going forever, we can't actually close it off at a particular number. So instead of writing our bracket this way round, that doesn't make any sense, we have to write it this way round. So though that might might look like they've forgotten to close the brackets, it's actually just a different way of um, defining this set. So essentially this can be written as this. Now normally this way of writing the notation you need to be able to read and IB often write it down like that and will write that in solutions to things as well, but it, it is fine if you stick to writing your solutions in the manner in which we're, we're we're accustomed to already, but you do need to be able to read what this is. Okay, and if we look at the other part here, so x is, again, any real number, but x is less than zero, you can see that they've defined it like this. So they've said, well, that can go out to negative infinity and all the way up to zero, but we can't include zero this time, so the bracket needs to go the other way around. And because we can't stop this at any particular number, we can't write it like that have to write it like this. So it doesn't actually include negative infinity, we can't stop at a particular number. 
Okay, now if you put those two things together, so if you put this one and this one together, um, if you say, well, I want both of these things, so both of these things would be union. Remember union from sets that's saying one or the other or both or the bit in the middle. Uh, in this case, because they don't actually overlap, we just want both of these things to be included. So allowing everything which is less than zero or anything which is greater than or equal to zero actually defines the entire set of real numbers. So we've now defined this function for the entire um, x axis, the all of the x numbers that you can think of, any real number for x. OK, so I think that was worth finding there. Uh, let's have a little look onto the questions now. And I think there's only one question in this case. So that's why we can go quickly on to the next exercise. So let's have a look at this. It says consider this function here. So it's now split into two. Um, and it might be that these both match up when x is equal to three. In fact, I suspect that this one does. But they don't necessarily have to match up. So we've got x minus four. So x minus four, let's just do a little sketch of this one. X minus four, go down to minus four, and it's gonna go up in ones, as a gradient of ones, so it's gonna go through four there. It's gonna go something like this. But this is for when x is greater than or equal to three. So I know that there's a coordinate point there at three, three comma minus one. OK, so when I'm putting in three here, I'm getting out minus one. So we're going to be starting at this point here. And so that's when X is greater than or equal to three. So it's going to start like that. And it's actually going to include that point there as well. So we could put a solid circle there if we want. Let's just see what's happening with the other part. So this is a negative quadratic. Um, and let's see what's happening with that negative quadratic. So. This one um, has, has a repeated root at plus two. So at plus two, there's gonna be a repeated root. And I know this is pretty nasty here, but if you go one across and one down, we should get to another point on the graph. I know that because this is, um, if we multiply that out, we'll get a minus x squared there. So I know that this is gonna go through this point here. So two, zero and then three minus one of course i can substitute three into here as well and see what i get out so three take away two gives us one one squared is one and the minus that is what minus one as well so i do know that it actually matches up this one so this is also going to go something like this on this side here now the y-axis intercept is going to be um Substitute in x is equal to zero, so we'll get minus two squared, which is four, and then put a minus on it is minus four. So it actually goes through there. So perhaps I should have given myself a bit more space on this, which is going to look something like that. Okay, so that's a sketch of the graph. Now, obviously, they want us to find what is f of minus one, f of zero, and so on. Okay, so we could come up with a little little table here for x and for f. We put in minus one, zero, three, five. Now, when we put minus one up to three, no, minus one and zero in, we'll need to put that into this function because for x is less than three. So if we put minus one in, for example, we're going to get out minus nine. If you put in zero, you'll get minus four. When you put three in, you'll need to put it into this part because this is uh, where the domain is valid for three onwards. So three into that gives us minus one and five into that gives us one. So we could now sketch this using these points, but you might want to just make sure with some other points there by checking, of course, that putting three into this function, which is where this function stops, actually does join up with the other one. OK, so the point here that comes out three comma minus one actually comes from this part of the function but it does match up to this function as well okay so we've now sketched it i actually did that first now write that write down the domain and range of f well the domain is any real number because we've got the numbers which are greater than or equal to three 
combined with the numbers which are less than three. So the complete domain of this function now, the complete function, all of your real numbers, we can go put any of these numbers into the function. And we can go as high up as we want to and as low down as we want to as well. So we can find answers which are anywhere on the y-axis. So we've got y belongs to the real numbers as well. Let's just put that one out. You see that we've got that one right. So the domain and range are the set of real numbers. So fine, done. Okay, so a little investigation there, which is pretty nice. Voila, and then only a couple of questions for 2J. Again, just a little reminder, um, this kind of notation is really useful if you are creating some mathematics. So if you've got what you think are two parts of graph, you think, well, maybe we've got increasing amounts of something for a certain time, and then we've got suddenly decreasing amounts of something or other, then you might wish to split your graph into two pieces and work out a function here and work out a function here. So this is quite nice for um, internal assessments or coursework, basically. Okay, let's have a look at the next little bit then. Oh, it goes back to six questions, in fact, here. So there we go, plenty of practice. And then for the next bit, for 2K, we're talking about classification of functions. Now, there's a little investigation again, talking about different types of mapping. Um, I just want you to have a look at these ones. I'm not going to discuss that at the moment, uh, but there are some de definitions here which we need to know about. Okay, let's just zoom into this one here. It talks about a one-to-one -one function and a many-to-one -one function. And later on, it's going to talk about onto functions as well. Okay, so when we're talking about one-to-one -one functions, we're basically saying for every value that we put in for x, we get out one value for y. That is to say, if I draw a horizontal line, so we're not talking vertical line test here, we're talking horizontal line, we should only cross our graph at one point for any choice that we make of that horizontal line. I think that's pretty obvious. Now you can see that they're writing this in maths as well. They're saying if every element in the range is an image of exactly one element in the domain, so every element in the range has to be defined and it comes from one element in the domain, then um, this is what we would write in mathematics. We say, i.e. for any a belonging to um, belonging to a set A and B belonging to a set B, if we put A into the function and B into the function, if it happens that they're equal, that would imply that A and B are equal as well. So the only way of getting the same height, essentially, is if we're putting in the same number. Okay, so A and B would have to be the same if we're getting the same height. Now, a little bit of maths um, notation here. If you want to say for any or for um, for every, you could say as well in mathematics, we write that like this. So later on, you might see for every a, um, yeah, for every a belonging to a and b belonging to b, such that this thing exists. Now, um, you, they don't use this in IB, but you'll see that later on when you write mathematics. It's just a way of saving some time. Okay, um, and also if you want to say there is in mathematics, you can write this big capital E backwards as well. That will turn up a little bit later too. So, um, so anyway, straight line graphs this way round as well. Straight line graphs are going to give one to one functions. Now, Many to one functions are things like the sine graph. So if we look at the sine graph going up to 2 pi or 360 degrees, um, you can see that in the range here, range being from minus 1 to 1 in this case, in the range, there are many x values which could give you the same height. Now, sometimes there's only one x value. Well, that's if we restrict the domain between 0 and 2 pi or 0 and 360. But this is still a many to one function if you can find a horizontal line which cuts the, the function more than once. Okay, so 
This one will be a many to function because there are many to one function because there are many x values, x1 and x2 here, which give you out, there we go, y1, a particular height. So this is a many to one function. Now, you might be thinking about one to many functions, what they might look like. Now, one to many functions don't exist because if you had one x value giving you many y answers, a bit like y squared equals x, then that gives you a graph and not a function. It gives you actually, in this case, two functions if you split it up in this case, but it's not giving you the definition of a function. So one to many does not exist, only one to one and many to one. Okay, so now we're going to look at the definition of onto functions. And I've just taken this here. And we're just going to start off with this definition at the bottom. And it says for onto functions, a function f maps the set A onto the set B. And it's an onto function if every element in B is an image of an element in A. Okay, so it could be that this is a one to one function. So where every single element in A maps onto a distinct element in B, or it could be that this is a many to one function as well. So it would include those. Um, this example here is not an onto function because S is not mapped by this function by taking an element of A leading to an element, this element in B. We have this element which does not have, is not an image of an element in A. So it's not coming from the original uh, object or the, the, um, the number or the argument from A. Okay, so even if we got rid of this, the question is, would we have an onto function? Well, you might be thinking now, well, hang on, Q has two values coming from A that lead to Q. But that's fine according to the definition because the definition is simply saying for um, every element in B, so take, for example, Q, is an image of an, an element in A. Well, it is true to say that Q is an image of an element in A. It's the image of A. It's also true to say that it's the image of C. So, um, so th this would be allowed. So we're allowed many-to-one functions. We're allowed uh, one-to-one -one functions as well. It, it catches both of those things. Okay, uh, well, this is new to this course this year. So this is kind of a, a new definition. Um, let's have a look at some of the questions here. Let's get a sense of stuff through the questions. I'm going to skip the little investigation there. And let's just deal with these ones here. So let's take uh, example 23. So example 23 says, determine whether these functions are onto, one-to-one, -one, neither or both. Now, of course, some one-to-one -one functions, one-to-one uh, -one functions can be onto functions, but obviously onto functions could also be many-to-one. Okay. So let's look at the first one. So this is part A. And it's saying, well, this function is taking for the x numbers, the domain is going to be all of the real numbers, and the y uh, answers or the, the set of images which are coming out here, the, the second set which is moving to the outputs, is also the real number. So we're allowed any number on y. Now, um, let's think, first of all, is it one to one? Well, it's pretty clear to see that it's not one to one because. If I drew a line here, for example, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, if I draw a line here, I'm getting this out as a many to one function. OK, um, so there are many numbers in this small section of the range. There are many numbers from the domain which gives us those heights. And it's sufficient to say that that exists somewhere within the range for it to be a many-to-one function in, in that case. So it's definitely not one-to-one -one because there are many answers, many x values, which give you out this height. Okay, 
So um, it's not one to one. Now, is it an onto function? Well, seeing as the range here is defined to be all of your real numbers, then if I chose, say, for example, I don't know, whatever, some height over here, 4.2 or something or other, you can see that 4.2 doesn't have an element in X, which is, which is giving us an image of 4.2. There is no number which leads to 4.2 according to this function. Therefore, there are numbers in the range which don't have numbers in the domain associated to them. So it's not an on, onto function either. OK, if we have a look at the next one, this is saying that X can be all of your real numbers. And you can see it's fine because this thing is continuing on forever. So it's fine to have all of the X numbers. It's defined. It's fine. And it's saying that Y is going to be greater than or equal to minus 3. So here's minus 3. Greater than or equal to minus 3 is up here. And you can see that this carries on forever upwards in that pattern, in that, in that fashion. And so does this one. So that would seem to be good. OK, so is this a one to one function? Well, again, no, because I can take a horizontal line where there are there is more than one X value which is associated with that Y value. So it's definitely not one to one. Is it an onto function? Well, any number which is greater than minus three here. So any number which is greater than minus three um is has an x number which is associated to it for example four will have an x number which is associated to it over here and somewhere over here as well but if we continue those graphs for example two has three x numbers which are associated to it so it's fine that's good um, and minus three has one x number which is associated to it so that's fine so yes it is an onto function and more than that, we can actually say that this is a many to one function as well. So remember, on two is describing both one to one and many to one. It's capturing both of those two, two terms. OK, well, um, after this is 2K. So you can have a look at 2K. And 2K goes up to question seven. And following this, we're going to be uh let's have a little look at this one talking about odd and even functions okay so that's coming up next in 2l okay so 2l coming next okay thanks for listening guys and i'll see you for the next one